Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mora here and in today's video I wanted to talk about Ken. Now I recently got the PC version and I've been trying to rank up my account there and during my ranked session I ran into Ken I will say about 85% of my matches from you know rookie to super silver 85% of the matches were against Ken and I'm not even joking or exaggerating this is how common I was seeing Ken so I figured okay if Ken is that popular in lower levels or if Ken is that popular in general and I know of course he's very popular but I didn't expect him to be that common so I figured it is a good time to now cover Ken so let's get it out of the way first and talk about some of his you know Let's say some of his lower level tactics or some of the little bit of scrubby tactics or some of the things that a newer player may not know. So the very first thing, of course, for Ken is the heavy kick Tatsu. Do is a heavy kick Tatsu and then the EXDB and all of this, you know, stuff. The thing is, non V trigger regular Tatsu like that, this is minus four on block. So you can always punish this. You can always block this and punish it with a combo if you have like a jab combo or something you can always punish this on block it is pretty easy to deal with so uh, don't wait for him and get into the dp or not trap this is really really fake now when he's in v trigger the tatsu become minus two on block so at minus two this is completely safe you can do nothing about this you can punish it on block but you can easily anti-air this as you can see for most characters you can kinda easily anti-air this, it is, it's really easy to deal with. So it is a move that I would recommend going to training mode and checking out how your character can punish this. Pretty easy, pretty reliable, again you don't have to block it and get into the 50-50 mix-up yourself, right? The third tactic that game players do is the EX Air Tatsu. EX Air Tatsu is rarely ever plus on block. Usually as you can see, Ken or Colleen would be plus one. Ken can very very difficultly space this to be plus. I don't think it's even possible anymore, it's always negative. So if you block the EX Air Tatsu, always take your turn. It is a dive kick style move, so it is decent at baiting anti-airs. But again, if you block it, always try to take your turn. And as you can see, you can even easily anti-air it. This of course will depend on your characters, but typically speaking, it is pretty easy to anti-air. The final thing is the one thing I mentioned in the my tips video and that is that his run cancels. Most of his run cancels are really unsafe. All of them are unsafe even, right? You can of course interrupt him like we did here but what I wanted to say again is that you can actually punish this with something like that. You can always get a counter hit punish. So this like a counter hit punish with Kooleen. You can always get counter hit because you, when he's running at you, he's in a counter hit state. So make sure to take leverage of that. So the other things that I wanted to talk about now is Ken's fireball and their use in his block strings or pressure in general. The thing about Ken is that his fireballs are actually really bad on block. I would say across the board he probably have one of the worst fireballs in the game, especially on block. Even the EX, surprisingly. So if he if Ken is doing the regular fireball, let's say from here, that is minus eight on block. Minus 8 on block for someone like Mika means that you get an EX Peach and that's a punish. If he does it from a little bit closer like that, you can actually get like a normal to punish. Like that medium punch was a punish. So at minus 8 it is really unsafe. You can usually punish this and I would say punish them easily. So look out for that. The second thing I wanted to talk about and that is his EX Fireball on block. The EX Fireball on block is only minus one, but Ken doesn't have a three frame. His three frame is the Tatsu. So that means that if you have a three frame, you can always trade here. Not only can you of course V reversal it, if you want to get out of the pressure, you can always go for the V reversal, but you can always always mash your three frame here and you will trade. So you don't even have to take his pressure if you have a three frame. So if you have a 3 frame, always try to challenge after his EX fireball because it's only plus 1. This is the regular fireball. The second thing that happens a lot is Ken players doing this strings like that. His medium kick hits. 
here's the thing you can always try to challenge here because this is minus two so Kim players will often try to go for this and then maybe not like respect your frame data or you know try to go for something else because you know that you will do the second hit of the target combo so if he doesn't commit to the second hit you can always counter hit him you know get something here going this is pretty easy to interrupt if he does commit to the second hit of the target combo like he does here he have to special cancel it and as you saw the second hit whiffs on crouching opponents so if you have a three frame you can always challenge here if you have a three frame especially if it's a crouching one you can always challenge here or even just crouch jab in general after you block his standing medium kick just crouch jab just crouch jab because he's minus two the second hit will whiff if you happen to block this standing he have to commit to an ex fireball to make it safe because it is minus six on block as you can see so he have to do a fireball or something and again because this is only minus one you can always do your jab here and be able to trade with him because you have a three frame ken does it he's only minus one or he's only plus one so your three frame will trade if you don't have a three frame try to crouch after the medium punch or the medium kick and always challenge at this position so now i wanted to talk about another thing and that is ken corner pressure in general and how you're supposed to deal with it one of the things about Ken that you have to worry about is his corner pressure and throw game. So, as you can see, Ken throw does 120 damage, 120 stun. 120 damage, 120 stun, honestly, is not bad. Like, he'll have to throw you a ton for it to be threatening. So, the very first thing about this is, if he dashes after a throw, Ken is minus 2. So, as you can see, after a dash, Ken is minus 2, so you can always get the interruption here. You can always interrupt if he go if you see him dash after a throw, always interrupt and take back your turn. If it is possible to like switch sides, go for that. It's all really really good. The second thing is that what happens if you get hit? On knockdown, Ken players will often do something like this step kick. And the step kick have a high low overhead mix-up or overhead and low mix-up, right? The thing is Ken can do this and meaty both rises so if i quick rise here and try to wake up with a normal i will get a counter hit and ken will get the combo but if i back rise and wake up as you can see his step kick will whiff so the thing here is he have to guess which 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 type of wake up you will do he can't do the setup and cover both of them at the same time. So if you're struggling against a Kim player, or if he's abusing this against you, of course this is minus 6 on block, so if I quick rise, or minus 7 on block I mean, if I quick rise and block the overhead, of course it's unsafe. But the thing is, he can do it and meet you if you do a quick rise and the back rise. He have to choose which one you are going for, and that makes it hard for him to do it consistently so mix up your wake up timing the second thing is what happens if he does the faint right so because ken can faint he doesn't have to do the over it he can faint and go into a low of course like the second one he can do this and midi both rises so again you can always jab and the thing about this and what you have to realize is the overhead comes first so if i don't know like let's say i will turn both of them on and i'll try to block him on the reaction now i don't know which is which right that's what you do you wake up blocking and then crouch or you stand block and then crouch because the overhead comes out faster so let's try this again i am waking up standing I don't know why he's not doing the crouch block. Wake up stand and then crouch block. And that's how you block this. So you stand blocks first and then crouch block. It's like a fuzzy block thing, right? Because the overhead comes out faster. So you block standing first and then block crouching. If you see the step kick. If you see the startup of the step kick animation. Because he can just meet you with crouching light kick. So what you like... Look closely at Ken if you see him doing the step kick or if you see him doing the forward movement of the step kick Block standing and then crouch immediately That is how you block against this attack now the final thing I wanted to talk about When you're fighting versus Ken take the throw Because if you don't like here, I'll try to throw him on wake up 
And if I take if I don't take the throw out the gift with a tick, you can eat something like this. And the damage output is insane. If you get if you get hit by Ken in the corner, we said the throw is 120 damage, 120 stun, as you just see. 120 damage one, in this situation, if me getting thrown is 120 damage, 120 stun. That's nothing. However, if I got hit, like we just saw, the damage output is ridiculous. So try to block Standy and take the throw if you can. If you can anti-air him in this situation, go for the anti-air. If you can't, just take the block, block and try to take the throw. If you're afraid of taking, take the throw versus skin in the corner especially. Of course, you can anti-air him from something like this. But generally speaking, generally speaking, don't take versus skin in the corner. You can take the throw all day versus him because 120 damage, 120 stun is a lot better than eating 400 damage for trying to tick. And now I wanted to talk about Ken's V trigger activations and how he can, especially V trigger one, of course, because V trigger two have the special hit or the you know the Shinryu can is a special attack itself, so it is not really a activation per se. What I wanted to address is the V trigger one and some situations that happens when you are fighting against Ken. So one of the things about Ken is that he can activate his V trigger one from his Shoryuken. So something like this will happen a lot. Ken will activate V trigger one and get a conversion on you. Of course, of course, if you block this on, on like if you block this, if you bait the DP and block it, he's unsafe. But these situations happen a lot. So what you might want to do is something else. You might go for a block. You want to bait the DP. So like that you will block. Of course he's minus seven in this situation, so he was punished. But let's say you are trying to bait it and block it, right? Well he can just do that. P plus two, wake up with that. So P plus two, and then manage to get a plus frame anyways. So there is a little bit of an inherent 50-50 mix-up on Ken's wake up when he is when he is knocked down and when he has V trigger one. So I will be a little bit careful about trying to meet Ken when he have V trigger one on deck because this 50-50 mix-up is kinda annoying to deal with. One thing that you can do when you're fighting against him is to try to not be point blank because for him to V trigger cancel out of the Tatsu, he have to the first hit of the Tatsu have to hit. So something like this, right? But if you're a little bit from a distance he will not be able to V trigger cancel this Tatsu and you will be able to uh, you know block it and punish it regularly. This is something that you will have to check out with your character what kind of situations you can set up to kinda set the distance where he cannot V trigger cancel the Tatsu. I say it's pretty important or you can just you know try to be patient block the Tatsu and you know get the V trigger activation over with right. The second thing I wanted to discuss is his V-Trigger activation normally in the Neutron, right? Ken's best V-Trigger activation by far, by far is the EX, v is the EX Fireball. So him doing something like this, this is the strongest activation. The reason that this is so strong is that even if you try to V-Reversal it, let's say you try to V-Reversal the EX activation block. So you try, you try to do this, right? Let me show you what happened if you try to V-reversal this. Ken can get a full jumping combo punish on you. This is the worst case scenario. He can easily throw you. He can do whatever he wants. So never, 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 never V-reversal the AX Fireball activation block. He is so plus in this situation that you should never ever go for that. What you should go for is try to V-reversal the hit before that he's gonna cancel into the Fireball form pretty much. So if Ken is going to do a, a normal into EX Fireball, it is usually 90% of the time gonna be the crouching medium kick into the EX Fireball or the crouching medium bunch to the EX Fireball. These are his most popular by far V trigger activations. So if Ken is low on health, let's say that Ken is at at 25% and he's desperate to activate his V trigger, he will either do the run V skill cancel, and this you can always V reversal as well, right? This you can always V reversal and kind of be safe, or he's gonna do a normal to the EX, to normal to the EX fireball, and it's gonna be the crouching medium kick pretty much. This is what he's gonna go for 90% of the time, so you will have to be careful of that. The other ones, like the step kick, the uh, of course he can block, but he can't throw you at the situation. 
the other one is the heavy kick the heavy kick he can't do much about so generally speaking the most the ones that you will have to worry about and focus the most on is his ex fireballs and never v reversal that on block even if you play a 12 frame character v reversal someone like chun li you will get at least thrown in the situation and now I quickly wanted to talk about Ken and his V skill 2 because I haven't discussed it at all. Ken's V skill 2 does his wheel kick thing, so it is this attack. The idea about this is that it is safe if he does a throw like that, he's only minus 2, and if he charges it, it becomes plus on block. This attack might be tricky to deal with at first, but honestly, it's really easy. If you find that most of the standing jabs, like if you're, especially if you're going to have a jab anti air, most of the standing moves are really, really good at dealing with this. So when you see Ken doing this, if your character have like a jab anti-air, it's honestly very very strong against it. Heavy mediums, maybe even something like a heavy is too slow, but you can almost always jab him out of this. It's kinda easy, even a medium punch will work. Of course if you're playing someone like Ryu, you can even bury this and full combo punish him. The thing about this is that when Ken start charging like what he's gonna do now, he can't, he can't back out. So he can't like fake charge it. He can't dash cancel it, he can't let it go and, you know, change the distance. So this attack is really, it is decent, it's not a bad V skill, but you can very easily deal with it and be able to punish it. My recommendation, honestly, jab him out of it or just do like a standing medium or something. Something is, a standing moves generally are really, really strong against this attack. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. They really help a ton with the uh, coverage of the channel. They make the video more recommended. So thank you very much for all the people who have supported me this far. If you want specific characters that you want me to cover next, please let me know. I will be doing everyone in the roster, but you know, I'm going to try to do one every week.